Chief Wade, thank you for joining me today. It's an absolute honor to be here with you, Kayla. Thank you for inviting me. Anytime. So we want to talk about what's going on in our communities, but we want to start with solutions because a lot of times we start with the negative. Absolutely. So what is working right now? What's working right now is our community engagement. The community is working in lockstep with us, and we are working in lockstep with our community, and that is so, so important. We cannot do it without our community members. We cannot do it without our stake, community stakeholders, our church leaders, our faith-based community, and our business owners. So now we are working in lockstep with the community, and it is absolutely working. So now, of course, you know, the counter to that is always, well, there's still things going on. Absolutely. So what do you think is the biggest thing that you can point to folks and say, well, yes, we have a problem, but this is being solved? Absolutely. The, the issue that we're faced with, and it's the obvious, you know, we're not the master of the unknown. The known is that we have an issue with gun violence here in the city of Jackson. We have an issue with young men who do not know how to deal with conflict. We have an issue with young men who are not emotionally intelligent and know how to deal with conflict. We have an issue with the availability and accessibility of guns in our community. Now what we have to do is allocate our resources, deploy our resources, and work at the problem holistically. Not just in a vacuum, not just, you know, in pigeonholes and silos. We have to work holistically together. And the way we do that is by utilizing our state resources, our county resources, and our federal resources. I have been in conversation with the U.S. Attorney's Office. We now have a gang initiative. We're now working with our NIBIN process to connect the dots with all the gun violence we're having around the city of Jackson. And we are showing signs of progress. I don't want to celebrate or hand out participation trophies to celebrate because that means that someone have, have lost their life. We have over a 70% solvability rate right now as far as our homicides. We are doing a lot of good things. We have a net gain of 46 police officers at JPD. Mm -hmm. A net gain of 46. Leadership matters. They came back because they saw the direction that we were going. They've got not one pay raise but two under my leadership. We have a lot of good things going, but we have a lot of work to do. But guess what, Kayla? I cannot do it by myself. Mm -hmm. We cannot just sit back as an audience and admire the problem. We cannot just sit back and stand packed or hold the fort we have got to take actionable measures as a community, as politicians, as leaders in our communities to address this problem. Because these problems did not start at 327 East Pascagoula Street. <laughs> That's the police department. They started in homes. They started in our community. So we have to address it that way as well. So you went back and you just did something pretty interesting. You said the address of the police department. Do you think it would make a difference if more people actually went to the police department and saw what y'all do? Well, it, it, you, you just hit you know, a very good point. We right now have a Citizens Police Academy going on. That is so people can have a bird's eye view of what we do at JPD every single day. We have 22 people that signed up for that. We have a clergy police academy starting next month for our faith-based community to see what we do every single day at JPD. We also have a crime summit this Thursday at Jackson State University. You know this. I'm not going to hide the numbers. We're not going to have these meetings behind closed doors. I have a monthly meeting open to the public in the community to talk about crime, the crime numbers, patterns, who we're looking for, who is pillaging our community, and we also have our federal partners in the room, DEA, FBI, working with us. The sheriff sometimes attends, Capitol Police attend. We have got to deal with this issue holistically. We cannot just sit back and point a finger because when we do, people lose their lives. Right. So then you think about going back, you know, even a little bit before your administration. Yes. The rocket launcher that was on the street, and folks were talking about that. People were talking about the drugs that were being found. Are these things still happening, or what was going on? Yeah, I don't know about the rocket launcher. I think that was for aesthetics. Okay. You know, shock value. We haven't found any rocket launchers, but what we have found, which is even more problematic, we have so many guns in our community that have Glock switches on them, mm. which makes these guns fully automatic. They're fully automatic. This weapon here can discharge 17 rounds. With you making your gun fully automatic, 
They're putting these extended clips on them. They're putting these barrels on them. And they're able to deploy 50, 60, 100 rounds at one, one shooting. That is problematic. That is something that we're facing in our community. That's something that the legislature passed about these Glock switches because a police officer lost his life this past year with someone who had a Glock switch on his gun. So that's the issue that we're facing, the modifications of guns in our community. And we have to take a stand. We cannot allow these things to continue to pillage our community. But also, the community has stood tall. You know, on the weekends, you know, normally they think, I guess the chief goes home and mm -hmm. sit down. No, I don't. I have so many community events that I'm invited to, to speak. I was at two churches this past weekend speaking. People want to hear the message. People want to be a part of the solution because these people are here because they love the city of Jackson. They're not here because they have no options. The police officers that work here are not here because they have no options. They're here because they love the city of Jackson. They see changes coming, changes here, and I call it a paradigm shift. We did not get here overnight. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna get out of this situation overnight. But I know with all the resources that we're bringing in, and I say this all the time, there's power and partnerships, and there are resources and relationships, and I am tapping into every resource that's available to me to help get this gun violence, gang issue, drug activity under control here in the city of Jackson.